Right, I'll put a bit of graphite powder on there, I'll just work that in. Knock the loose stuff back into the box and blow away the excess. Now you might well ask, why graphite powder, why not something else? Well you could use something else, there's plenty of options. You could use a very thin smear of molybdenum, dry molybdenum paste. You could use molybdenum powder I suppose if you had it in powdered form, but I don't. I don't advise using a grease of any sort in there because it'll inevitably get sticky over time either because the solvents dry out or um, because it gathers up plenty of dust and detritus and becomes a sticky paste. So that's all good, that's working nicely. So I'll slide that over into the blade open position. Start fitting my shutter blades. I'm great at doing this in the wrong order and ending up with shutters that don't open but I think we've got it right today. This blade's got a steep cut out at the back and that's to clear the that hole there where the shaft comes through for the cocking shaft. And the final blade is a cover blade. And goes over the first blade position. That's good. Now I'm just going to close those blades very slightly. And fit the case, the shutter case back over the top. And you hope to do that without disturbing anything. I'm holding this case together here at the moment. I'm just checking that the action is smooth and that those blades open and shut smoothly. Nothing is out of place. And the three screws back in. These were unusually tight when I took the shutter apart. I don't really know why that should have been. Check that it still works nicely. Tighten the screws up. That's the mechanism plate back in the case. Blades open and shut. The action's nice and smooth. And we can start the reassembly process of fitting the componentry back into the shutter. First thing back in are two very fine springs, one of which just tried to make a break for it, but I've got it back. Checking the action, make sure that's all good and that the spring is firmly seated. And this spring is the B lever spring. And after that I can put the B lever back in place. Just 
and its retaining screw and spring. Let's give that a little wipe. So I want the shutter blades open, so I'll hold back that tab. The shutter blades are open, and that allows the B lever to drop down into the towards the lens tube so that I can fit its retaining spring in place. That's it. Now yeah, this spring and post that's not in the focus is it? It's a post coming up the middle of that so the screwdriver's got a split down the middle to go over that screw head. Now I've got to get this in position. Just checking that the B lever moves, it does. Tighten that screw down and swing its spring back over against the lens tube. So the B lever moves freely and that spring bears on this lever here. This lever is um, what latches the shutter stops the shutter from running when the self-timer is set until the self-timer runs down. That looks good. I'll see if there's any... how that screw is snug. That's good. Next, the flash sink stuff. First, the, the pallet wheel. down in position, those pallets don't want, that's better. Then the pallet wheel sector gear I suppose you'd say. That's good. And the spring for that. Always entertaining to fit. Grabbing that carefully with some needle nose pliers, stretch it across, pop it into the slot and we're good to go. That's good. And the B lever drops in nicely, that's good too. More of the flash control stuff. It sits over its post. The moving flash contact sits on top of that. And we'll put that in the set position. This little component here is showing some reluctance and it looks to me like it's damaged. It appears to be bent at this point. 
and I can see a scuff mark on that plate where it's been running across so I'm just going to straighten that up or find another one Alright, as we were I chose to use another one, I didn't like the look of that uh, damaged one it was bent, or bent I can deal with, that's not a particular problem but it was also quite rough where something had been done to it, I'm not sure what yet perhaps somebody had lent in with a pair of pliers and um, adjusted it but whatever was done to it, it wasn't a good thing and it would not have helped the shutter to work So I'll inspect that damaged part more closely when I've got time and see if I can figure out what was done to it and I'll probably never know why and That's all in place, now I've got to hook the return spring back over it, the back here That's good, that's all moving smoothly. I'm going to put the shutter release arm in place. Oops, it's wiped a bit of molybdenum on there, but there's too much. Molybdenum typically you're just wanting to be leaving a dirty mark with it, not much more than that. And the spring needs to come right across the top and be tucked in underneath. That's good. So far so good. Everything's going smoothly, comparatively. I'll get ready for the next bit. Let's carry on here. I've got to put in the control lever for the self-timer flash sync selector just a little touch of molybdenum in a couple of places now I've got to get this thing swung into place it's got to go around that flash contact so it's always a bit interesting that pin through in the right position that looks good suspiciously easy the retainer just click that arm out because it catches in a, a notch there and you want to make sure it's in the notch or at least on the edge of the ring not trapped up behind it, otherwise when you do the screws up something will get damaged that's free, that's good do those screws up don't need to go overboard like the last person now that can go back in our jig the jig I'm using here is a, a front plate off an, an old Retina Reflex S which is good to hold these shutters and it gives you a good platform to work on when you're trying to install them or work on them or put them together so the main drive cam I want some molybdenum paste around the outside of that crescent shaped piece quick wipe on the inside and some 
on those edges there where it picks up the uh, mechanism plate and on the mechanism plate on the touch molybdenum and paste on the two points that the main drive cam contacts and on the main detent spring for the shutter which I can just see through that gap I'll swipe a bit onto that gap where we were main drive cam get that in that's good the bracket that retains the spring in the main drive spring itself and then hooked into the little hole in the cam and then hooked into the retainer so we cock the shutter it fires all good retard gear train and delay action next Let's get this retard gear train in place. This has been cleaned, flushed in naphtha, lubricated with a bit of graphite powder worked in, and the excess blown away. And help for me getting this screw in the right way up the first time. That's better. Yep, that sounds satisfactory. Now to get the self timer or delay action in place. To get this seated on the mechanism plate, it's always a bit of an act. That's it. Held in place with a single screw. It seems to run down nicely too. Just about ready to close this up. I'll clean these other components. And just run some molybdenum around this cocking ring. Doesn't need much. It hooks over that post. And take that into position. That's fine. A cocking shaft. Couples to that ring. Get the timing of the teeth correct. 
That's it. And this little catch, the springs come unhooked. Where did it go? Over there. Yes, that looks likely. That's good. The speed setting cam and some leptin and paste around the inside of that. Under that face there. Let's pop that into place. That looks okay. The retaining ring in place. Right, we'll set that to an eighth of a second and see what we get. I'll just cock this. Release it. It's a bit fast. It's all right. We'll try the self timer. It's running down nicely. Here's the shutter. And put the shutter back onto its lens mount now. Slide that into position. As a pinion gear goes there, where is it? Hiding. Oh, there it is. Let's give that a quick clean. Making sure there's no impact to dirt there. And the pinion gear. Is on the shaft just there. Check that moves smoothly and it does. The detent ball for the shutter speed settings sits on that spring. I'll put a bit of molybdenum and paste on there, which will serve to keep the ball in place while I fit the shutter to this front mount. At least that's the idea. Should be all in place. I'll check that the pinion gear coupled correctly. Looks like it did. Three screws hold this together. And before I tighten the screws, I have to make sure that that black cover plate on the front is centered. Otherwise, it won't sit flush. That'll do. 
Now it's centered. That's good. Just needed to pull that across with my fingernail. And the third of the screws goes here. Check that the shutter cocks and fires. It does do the three screws up. It's good. So that's ready to go back onto the uh, front panel and do all, put all the gear room and stuff on the back of it after that.